Rabat. We are now leaving Rabat. This is a big journey, actually. I'm just, we've got seven hours before we need to rest. Which could be a problem, because if I remember rightly, the way these roads are built, there are very long stretches in between service centres and uh, sleep areas and petrol stations, that kind of thing. Actually, we had this discussion on the chat the other day on the stream about uh, uh, how, how British people call it petrol and uh, guys from the US call it gas. And which is the correct name, you know? Um, obviously, obviously you could use the word fuel, but fuel's a very generic term. Fuel doesn't distinguish between petrol and diesel. And I asked the guys from the US who were in the stream, you know, do you have a different word for diesel? Do you just call gas? Is, is, does gas just mean petrol? And it actually, t it's quite interesting actually, because what they do have another word for diesel. They just have, you know, the word diesel. And gas means gasoline, which means to, to British people means petrol. But in actual fact, petrol is short for petroleum. And diesel and um, petrol, if you like, uh, are actually both derived from petroleum. They're both petroleum. So technically speaking, gas, which is short for gasoline, uh, is a particular refined variant of petroleum. So what I'm saying is... In, I think the, the guys in the US have it right. I think it is correct to call it gasoline and diesel, and both of them are petroleum. The fact that in the UK we call it petrol, I think, is wrong. What do you guys think? Let's take a wide swing while there's nothing coming. I mean, it's just one of those localised things. It doesn't mean anything. People, countries call different things. You know, they have different names for stuff. So what? Who cares? Embrace the difference. Neither is wrong. Although in this case, I would argue for the word gas, gasoline might be better. Unfortunately, we also mean, you know, when we talk about gas in the UK, we're talking generally about canisters of gas that you would use to light a barbecue or um, one of those gas lighters that you would have to keep you warm in the barbecue. That's what we mean by gas. Something that is liquid, but it turns to gas at room temperature. Whereas petrol... Um, you know, comes out as a liquid, so it's not a gas straight away. That's why it kind of feels weird, weird to call it gas, but calling it gasoline would obviously be okay. Anyway, it's just, it's just a <laughs> I'm waffling. It's just an interesting little subject in its own right, isn't it? So here's another interesting subject. So I've got a few things I want to talk to you about, but um, here's one of them. A couple of people have suggested the idea of me having a co-driver. Now, what does that mean? Well. It doesn't mean anybody be physically sat here. That's not possible to do in the game. Um, nor does it mean anybody's going to come over to my house and co-drive with me. It doesn't mean that either. What it means is getting somebody, getting somebody in on TeamSpeak that I can talk with while I drive. So while we're out, you know, doing a long drive like this, I could sit there and I could talk to them. Now, thinking about it, I think the ideal people for that would be truckers like real life truckers who obviously watch my videos there's quite a lot of you guys who are real life truckers watching my videos um and i don't know i think it kind of might be fun but i'm hesitant to do it in, in case it's not what my viewers want to see you know because obviously you guys are watching my videos because you like you like watching me truck you you like the things i do you like listening to me talk about various random st random things uh, and stuff happens obviously in the game and you like that that's fine I understand but would it also be fun to perhaps do some videos where I get a trucker in uh, it could be a trucker from Europe could be a trucker from the US Canada um, you know even South America uh, Australia and they could come in they could talk about their real life experiences trucking some stories they've got uh, some incidents they had some of the funnier things talk about their truck what kind of rig they drive what kind of loads they pull what the normal routes are you know what I mean it could be kind of interesting and fun two-way dialogue and it might make these longer journeys more interesting but I need your feedback I need you to know if that would be a good idea because if 
If most people say, that, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, then I can set the wheels in motion and start asking for real-life truckers to contact me and, you know, who'd be up for that? Uh, and then tell me something about themselves so that I can then pick out the more interesting ones then get them in and try it out. But obviously, if it's not something that you guys particularly want to see, then I won't do it at all. So leave me a comment. Let me know uh, your thoughts on having a co-driver. I wouldn't just pull anybody random in, of course. I would actually filter the people out first before I start making a video. But uh, yeah, anyway, let me know what you think. On the subject of streaming, you may have noticed I've been streaming quite a bit more lately. And the reason I was streaming was because I was trying to get partnership with Twitch. Now, partnership lets you do a few things. Um, Obviously, it lets you run adverts, but the, the main reason I wanted it was because it would let me stream in 720p, which is obviously quite a high resolution, but a lot of people can't watch in 720 because of, you know, bandwidth restrictions on the, their internet connection. But being partnered means that Twitch will then um, re-encode the video, re-encode the live stream so that you can watch it in a lower resolution like 360. So everybody's happy, they get to see high res, they get to see low res. After trying since pretty much December last year, Twitch finally accepted, yesterday they finally accept, well they accepted my partnership three days ago, and yesterday after I sent all the forms back, they activated my partnership, and it happened last night on the 28th, 28th of June. And so just to try, I tested the settings out and then it, they all worked. And then to celebrate, I decided to stream some Euro Truck. And that's the stuff I was talking about that you can go back and watch now. But I am finally, and this is such a good, a big deal for me, I am finally partnered with Twitch. It's been so hard for me to get that. I don't know why, but it, you know, it's uh, the fourth time I've applied. And they finally let me in. And it's slightly disappointing for me because I've seen other channels that have far less people watching um, get partnered. And I've also, you know, looked at channels that are pretty much dead. There are plenty of Twitch people, uh, channels on Twitch that are partnered, but they haven't streamed, you know, for months or they stream once a month. And as a partner, you're supposed to stream three times a week. But it looks like Twitch aren't really monitoring that and then taking partnership away. And it kind of strikes me as, you know, if you've got these kind of strict rules for getting in, why are you not policing that when they're in and making sure that they're, they're doing what they're meant to be doing? You know what I mean? If, like, you're in a partnership, you kind of got to keep your eye on the partnership, haven't you, to make sure it's going where you want it to go. Anyway, that, that's an aside. The point is, I'm partnered with Twitch, I'm really happy, and when I stream, you can come and watch in, in nice high resolution, um, but I will be changing my Twitch page now. I'll be, I will be uh, restarting some stuff on there. Um, obviously, the chat rules need updating, and uh, I'm going to get some, going to get some stuff that will for the people who donate. Because I, the way I'm going to kind of run it is, I'm not going to run ads. I don't, I don't want to run ads. I tried it out just to see if it worked, and it works. But it's not really the direction that I want to go in uh, running ads. I would prefer, prefer to um, just accept donations and also when I, if I get the next step in Twitch is to get a subscriber button, which means that you guys can subscribe to me and you get your own little special icon which I can create um, and that way you'll be, you'll, be, um, you'll be supporting my stream. Because if, you know, if I'm not running adverts, I'm not getting anything for doing it. And quite frankly, when I'm streaming, it's taking up time that I could be using making videos. So I do have to balance things. Uh, and I am trying to grow my YouTube channel to make it successful if I can. Uh, because one day, one day I'd like to do this full time. But it's going to be difficult for me to get there. Because, as you know, I'm a dad uh, and I have a mortgage and all the rest of it. And kids. Uh, and kids are expensive. And so becoming a full-time YouTuber and streamer is a bit of an uphill struggle for me. And I rely entirely on money that I get from YouTube 
and what you guys donate to me while I'm streaming. I rely entirely on that. And if I'm ever going to do this full time so I can push out more and more content for you guys to watch, which is something I really want to do, then I'm going to have to either run tons of adverts or just rely on people donating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the donating route and I'm going to do it a few ways. So I'm going to, I already have people, when they donate, I change their chat color on screen. So I have the chat overlay and the color changes so that it shows that you're a donator, you're a a person supporting my stream and I thank you for that but I'm gonna go a step further I'm gonna get this thing where when you donate you'll be able to put a message with it and when you hit the donation the message will pop up on the stream live as you're watching and you'll be able to see the message that you put in so you'll be able to say oh you know um, thanks for all your your help squirrel thanks for a wonderful stream whatever it is you want to say or just say hi or um, this is for you um, buy a new buy a new mouse you know <laughs> whatever it is you want to say anything uh, that will pop up and then I'm going to go a step further and it's raining I'm going to go a step further and have it so that you can uh, your chat color will change automatically because at the moment when people send me a message uh, send me a donation I have to go manually change their color how long have I got left before I get three hours forty minutes just looking, there's a rest stop here. I think I'll push on. It's three and a half hours is plenty. Um, at the moment, I have to, after the stream, update your chat color on screen to show you're a donator. So I'm going to have kind of different levels and colors of donation. And uh, I'm going to have it so that uh, the system will be scripted so that automatically changes your color. So within, you know, 10 minutes of... of donating you'll have a message on the screen and your chat color will have changed and that'll be awesome so that's the kind of direction I'm going in with the stream uh, now in terms of YouTube uh, I'm going in the same direction I'm, I'm playing indie games uh, obviously waiting for Daisy standalone waiting for Battlefield uh, Battlefield 4 in October um, and Kerbal Kerbal's such a time sink I love playing Kerbal well that's a chopper Holy cow! Flying over the road! <laughs> That's awesome! Uh, yes, I'm playing Kerbal. Uh, Kerbal takes time to do footage for it. Uh, you know, I've got to try things out, make sure they work, then film it. Um, and Eurotruck, obviously. I'm going to talk about Eurotruck a bit more later. Because uh, I've got lots of opinions and ideas about Eurotruck and where it's going. Can I overtake? Is it safe? Is it safe? I don't know if it's safe stick my nose out and have a look whoa one coal truck overtaking another no I gotta come in gotta come in can't do it uh, incidentally if you was watching my stream uh, yesterday if not go and watch it because there's one bit where I overtake I think it's seven cars and a truck all in one go it's just incredible I got, it's got to be a record on Eurotruck. It's certainly a record for me. I just get fed up being stuck behind these guys and I just overtake a lot of them. Oh, I so want to get past, but... You can't see the lights very well from a distance. I need a run-up, don't I? What I need to do is back off a little bit, get a run-up, and then as I've got some momentum, hopefully nothing will be coming the other way, and then just keep flooring it. And go right past let's give it a go right building up some speed building up some speed and there's a is there a car coming here we go here we go oh there's a car <laughs> you son of a bitch it must be difficult overtaking a truck if not impossible especially that speed limiter as you're overtaking the speed limiter just kicks in come on let's do it if I see something, I'm just going to hit the brakes. Come on, come on. There we go. There we go. We're past. Don't know why he's going so slowly. we got a job to deliver here. I'm sure he has too. Somebody somewhere wants that. those coal bags full of ice cream. Everybody's doing it. Is it the rain or is it the speed limit of the road? I don't know. Look at that truck. Look, look how far away it is. And I can't see any lights. He's got two little piddly lights on it. 
pretty certain that my lights are more visible than that. Let's have a look, actually. Yeah, my look at my truck. With all of its awesome lights on it. It just looks amazing. Have you ever known it rain in the desert like this? Oh yeah, look at that. Those little lights down the front, the ones we put on the main grill. The little side lights. It looks wonderful. I'm really happy with how that turned out, actually. What's this sign here? Danger, slow trucks went uphill. Um, I'm guessing that means there's a hill coming. Doesn't look like it right now, unless we're going up one of these things. I can't understand why it's pissing it down in the desert, if I'm honest with you guys. I thought we are going downhill. I can't understand why there's so much rain. This is a desert. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello? Why did that just suddenly ping out? That was weird. I hit the brakes and, and <laughs> it flicked out to the desktop. What on earth? That wasn't ideal timing. Oh, this guy is a... Oh, just get out of the way, son. I'm not going to overtake because I think we're about to go up a hill. And judging by that sign back there, it could be a steep one. I'm going to have to suffer this guy all the way up here. He seems to be speed limiting himself to 50k. For reasons which I do not know. Is it the weather? If you have a breakdown here, you're going to have to pull over into all this um, sand. Wow, we're struggling. You're going to have to pull over onto the side into, into all that sand. You could actually get stuck in it. This is a climb, isn't it? Fifth gear. This trailer feels heavier than it is. Either that or this truck is struggling. I know we've only got, what was it, 680 brake? That should be plenty. 14 ton cargo? What the hell? 3,000 new meat? I don't understand. Why is this truck struggling up that hill? It doesn't, something doesn't feel right. Oh, this is a nice run. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think we're going to get past... No, we're not. Shit. <laughs> a one car stopped me from overtaking this troll car in front of me. God damn. I had all the speed and momentum then. It's perfect. Perfect time to overtake. And it stopped raining. Come on, car. Come a uh, truck. Car? Come on, truck. Yeah, look at this. I'm full throttle. I think this is the point where manual gears would be um, a lot better. This is... this is horrendous. There's nobody behind me though. A man truck's always like this? I'm pretty certain my Volvo and my Scania would be doing a better job right now. I don't know, I'm confused. I thought this thing had enough grunts. Um, I heard it getting tired. Oh no, we've got one and a half hours left. I think we need to plan the rest stop. Let's get some momentum going. Seriously game, pick a different trailer. Yeah, I keep seeing those. So you put a trailer mod in the game and then they just... <laughs> every five seconds you see it. Apart from the cement mixer, of course, which you never see at all. Unless the cement mixer's in the game, but this coal thing is overriding it? I mean, that's a possibility. The order that you load mods is, of course, important. That's one of the things that bugs me, is you never know... Um, you never know which trailer a particular mod is going to overlay. Like, the mod author doesn't say, Oh, this is a coal trailer and it replaces the, you know, crane trailer in the game. So if you see another mod, and that replaces the crane trailer in the game, then you think to yourself, well, I can only use one or the other, can't I? Because at the moment, you just drop them both into the mods folder, enable them both, and then wonder why you can see one and not the other. Um, for some reason, the game doesn't allow new models to be added, new trailers to be added. It just it says, here's all of the trailers in the game, and 
you can ju just replace the model of it, but you can't add another one. Which, I, I don't really understand why. Why can't people just add new ones? Why do we have to replace what's there? Why can't we just supplement it? Let's have a look at the map, actually, because... Um, how long has it been since then? That's been about two hours, so that's got to be at least two hours. I think we're going to have to take a trip to... Weejda? Weejda? Ouija board? I don't know. How do you say that? O-U-J-D-A. Weejda. I can't say it. Um, I think we're going to have to turn a right here, actually, and go and rest in that town, because we've got an hour left, and we're not going to make the next, next rest stop. So, I'm going to put my foot down and see how many things I can overtake. That's one. Let's go for number two. Always have a backup plan, guys, when you're overtaking. Always know, if something comes over the hill, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? Make sure you know that before you overtake. That helps a lot. Always have your backup plan. Is he turning? I don't think he is. Okay. I know I'm getting tired, dude. I know that. You don't need to black me out, thank you. I reckon I can overtake this, dude. Yep. Looks like a Volkswagen Golf, probably. So we're going to rest up, and I think I'll save it here, actually. I'm going to save the game. And uh, so we can continue the journey safely. Uh, and then we'll start talking about World Truck Simulator and all that good stuff. How far am I through this job? Oh, I've switched from miles to kilometres now. Um, damn. That's still quite a way to go, actually. I don't even think I'm halfway. This is definitely a multi-part video. This is a, a big old drive, actually big old drive. I didn't realise that the route across Africa was actually this long but it does mean that we'll pick up we'll pick up a lot of um, a lot of the scenery on the way which is good what I wanted to do is it is some pretty nice scenery. I mean some parts of it do look a little bit amateurish the textures and stuff but otherwise yeah it's pretty good interesting and I like interesting in different maps. I'd like to go through, you know, places like Bolivia where it's kind of jungly and Cuba. You know, you can even have people trying to... Um, actually, <laughs> I don't want to go into this. It's just ideas I've got for the game and I really want to talk about that when we talk about World Truck Sim. So I'm not going to that subject. But yeah, getting held up. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Just saying, just saying, getting held up. Um, here will do. This is a repair shop, which means it's also a rest stop. And we've got plenty of trucks here. And we're going to pull over right there. And we're going to save it. Right, we're all saved. So now it is time to rest. There we go. Get some rest. One o'clock in the morning. The moon is up. This place looks totally different. So it's time for a bit of nighttime desert driving, I think. I think I'm just going to whack every single light on that I've got. As I always do. Trying to reverse around that bit there. Incidentally, if you've not watched my Scania truck driving uh, dangerous drives, then you might want to. Um, and if you don't have the game, you might want to consider buying it because I can tell you something. Playing that game with its dangerous drives and ridiculous moves it makes you do. Uh, in the last one, I had to. Rev serpentine reverse through a bunch of cargo uh, sorry through a bunch of containers there's nothing else here is there no um, 
And once you've done that, you become a far better driver, I'll tell you. Okay. I'm conscious of clipping my trailer, so I'm taking a wide berth. That's better. Um, yeah, the, in, in the last video, the, <laughs> the last dangerous drives I did, you've got one of the drives was to you start off in a, a container yard at a shipyard and it's full of containers and, and there's like a forklift truck has tipped over so you're there with your container and you have to then reverse it in between all of the containers and it is seriously difficult you've got to do a reverse serpentine very difficult uh, and then which makes you very good at reversing when you play this game suddenly things don't look quite so hard and the other one that I did, which is an interesting one, the very last one on that video, was earthquake relief, I think it's called, and and you have to take some some relief to a trailer full of stuff, you know, food and supplies, across the world's ricketiest bridge, which has never been used for years. And it, it is, honestly guys, it's just got planks of wood, and you've got to keep the tyres on the planks of wood very very difficult i'm so surprised that i made it across but um wow this is a lot of lights on here have i got all of my lights on i do as well bloody hell look at that i can see for miles i've got to have a look at this on the outside awesome that looks really good and yeah, I know everybody's going to flash me. These guys are going to go, Yeah, I can't see. And they've got a right to flash me because I'm packing the sun on the top of my truck. But f quite frankly, I care more about you being able to see stuff in the video than I care about them flashing me. So, to hell with them. But yeah, Scania Truck Driving is a good game. If you see it on offer, suggest you pick it up. Don't think you can get it on Steam. It never actually got green lighted, unfortunately. Can I meet this guy to the junction? Of course I can. He's only going about 15 kilometers an hour. Right. Can't say a great deal. Very, very dark in that direction. I think the... The... Um, the AI cars need to have stronger lights on them. Particularly, you know, at night time you can't see the lights until they're on top of you and particularly when you look in your mirrors honestly, you just, you don't even know something's behind you. It's so bad. I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, they need to be brighter. So, um let's talk about World Truck Simulator. 